we came. This is the Bernina, Bernina 930. Um, I've got it on the one of the embroidery stitches. You can go very, very fast. That is up to 1100 stitches a minute. Um, but you don't have to go that fast if you don't want to. You can go slow. Um, whichever you need. Um, and then 930 has the ability to uh, run it just half speed or full speed. I was showing you full speed there. Okay. And, oh, I should be using my knee left to show you that, shouldn't I? Okay. Switching stitches. We were on stitch 19. Now we're moving to stitch 18. How slow I can take it. Or how fast I can take it. And uh, it stops with the needle up so that uh, you can uh, move it without having to use your hands. Uh, you can use the knee lift to lift the presser foot if you have the knee lift. I'm not selling the knee lift with the Bernina 930 this time. Okay, I sh should have used my heel tap. I'm mm, not used to doing it for a video. Okay, uh, go ahead and do some more of these stitches for a minute. Just the arrow. Nice and easy. Beautiful stitches. Okay, and as you can, you notice the needle is up. And if I want the needle down, I help tap my heel on my uh, presser foot. This is the $180 presser foot um, that ha has both the needle up and needle down with the heel tap. Okay. That's just from tapping my heel. Um, and uh, also, this the knee bar is for raising and lowering the presser foot. See, hands free. So, like when you're turning corners, if you're not an idiot like me, uh, you'll remember to use the uh, remember to use the uh, knee bar and the heel tap when you're turning corners or moving things. It's especially helpful for quilters. Um, because they need to hold on to the quilt because it's heavy while they're uh, doing stitching. Uh, okay, let's see. Switching it down to stitch 17. Let's... High speed again. And let's go to the high stitches. A minute. Oh, uh, and here's your right there. See the little red line? That's where your embroidery designs start and stop. And that way you can make sure that you actually match up your embroidery design. Uh, if you're doing a couple of uh, things in a row. Okay, heel tap down. <laughs> knee bar up. Knee bar down. Heel tap down up. <laughs> okay, now I can go ahead and sew some more. But so uh, that's your heel tap. How valuable that is, particularly for quilters. Um, anybody doing big stitches. Purposely going and stopping at the red line. Heel tap down, needles in. Knee bar. Bar. And let's switch to the next stitch down. It's a smaller bead, bead work. Step a really slow. See, so you can do that controlled of sewing on full speed. Or you can just do a medium speed. Or you can do a high speed. Which 
Stitch 16. I don't always remember to stop at my um, at the end of the design, so I'm a little bit of a dingling that way. Ready, next stitch. Okay, heel tap. Knee bar. There we go. And off we go. also has the special basting control here with your super long basting stitch or a, not quite as long but still uh, still definitely a basting stitch um, when it's on the center then it's on regular stitches um, other stitch length is, is right here most sewing machines only would have the um, stitch length down to the four there um, for their basting stitches and so particularly for dressmaking or quilting, the basting mechanism is, oh, so incredible. But anyway, uh, let's see. Go down and show you the next stitch. And the machine, for some reason, sounds much louder on camera than it does in real life. I don't know if it's just because I have it so, the camera so close to it. Or what exactly it is, but uh, the machine's not really as loud in uh, real life as it is in the, on camera. I can end up in the middle of the design. <laughs> okay, little tap, needle down, foot left, down. Boy, I love that. I'm going to miss this machine. But I have bills to pay, so... Oh, it also has the built-in button holder. Um, of course, it's got the free arm. Uh, and you can also get an extension table for it. I use it in my desk, uh, my sewing table here. Usually, I don't usually have fabric under it, but trying to make it look a little <laughs> neater. Um, uh, I'll be selling a lot more of my Bernina stuff, including my uh, the ruffler for this, including a uh, extra spool holder. It's not perfect, as you can see, um, uh, but it works perfectly. Uh, and then also the uh, also the cut and sew. Um, they're dropping things. Oh, and the cut and sew comes with its own presser foot. Mm, well, um, I guess that's probably as much as I... Oh, and the controls down here, you can do... Uh, if the outer ring is for darning uh, and or versus sewing. So if you want your feed dogs down, you use the, turn this outer ring to the darning. Um, if you want straight stitch or zigzag or the other stitches, the actual sewing stitches, um, use this here. Um, turn the outer ring to control to sewing. Uh, the center control has your green light and your red light. Red light is for stretch stitches. Green light's for regular stitches. And you can tell which one's which up here. If you want to use the green stitches, make sure your green light's lit up. If you want to use the stretch stitches, make sure you've got your red light lit up. Oh, and in order for those to work, you have to switch for stitches 1 to 20 
you have to move the control up to there if you want to do straight stitches or zigzag stitches uh, they need to be that needs to be down at zero and then it won't matter where that is if this is down at zero but if you want to do pretty embroidery stitches you need to have that up and here is your uh, stitch width on the outer ring your um, uh, needle control for you can move your needle position um, basically by oh I have it on zigzag that won't help <laughs> Okay, you have to move it over to the stitch width to zero if you want to use the ne the uh, needle positioner. But it makes it really easy to do top stitching um, where you want it exactly. Um, you just got to make sure you're using a foot that has a large enough uh, opening that the needle won't hit it. Um, okay, back to my other stitches. I think that's the main stuff I needed to... Oh, and automatic tension. Incredible stuff. Incredible stuff. That's the bottom. And that's the top. And I did another sample of all the stitches. And this one I used a uh, cream colored thread on the bottom and the red thread on the top. And as you can probably see, uh, it is adjusted for absolutely even sewing from front to back. So you can see your bobbin thread up here. You see the little tiny cream of it. And you see the little tiny bits of red on this side. And that shows that they're locking right in between the two fabrics, which is exactly what you want. Um, if you want uh, more of a satin stitch, uh, you can also um, either tighten your bobbin one quarter turn or uh, or you can adjust your attention up here for anything that needs special uh, attention or special tension. <laughs> uh, okay, well anyway, so that's the Bernina 930 and this is Rebecca Ware um, and it is February 16th, I think, 2013. Goodbye.